I want to discuss, we're going to get back to oral oncolytics here specifically, and we've been discussing them mostly. Um, the pros and the cons, and I, I, you also were discussing adherence, which is where I really want to go with all this. Um, the pros and the cons of these oral oncolytics, um, in general terms, for patients, providers, and payers, we alluded to it, but let's go over it in some specific ways. What's the, the advantage to the patient of the oral oncolytics? I mean, I, th I think there's several advantages. One is uh, the convenience of being able to take a drug at home and not have to go to the office every week for in infusions. Um, uh, also, they tend to have um, fewer side effects than some of the IV drugs. Also, there's more control over these drugs. So if you're taking you know, a, a drug you know, every day and you start to have side effects, you can stop that drug. You know, call your doctor and, and well, stop well, well. the drug. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you put that in because right. isn't that one of the other problems? Right. right, you're having side effects, you can stop them. Right, right. <laughs> with the direction of your doctor. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and of course that's potentially a disadvantage as well. But, um, and then the third thing, you know, and, and this, you know, people have negative views of chemotherapy because of the traditional IV chemotherapies that we've used and the nausea, vomiting, alopecia, et cetera, that we have with that. And you know, with certain diseases like um, breast cancer, if you're starting a patient on Zolota, um, it's, uh, it's an easy transition to chemotherapy from hormone therapy, as opposed to, you know, we're, we're gonna start giving you IV chemotherapy. I mean, I, I've seen patients who would almost rather have the cancer right. than face what they fear yes. uh, is the experience of chemotherapy. Yeah. I mean, so. in the chemo we use, the oral oncolytics we use, which tend to be IMIDs, immunomodulatory drugs, these patients are on them for very long periods of time, years, and, you know, they're not easy to tolerate. They are not. They're, they, because they're oral, they tend to cause more GI side mm -hmm. effects. These patients have chronic diarrhea. They have um, sometimes even neuropathy. I mean, they can be tough. It, you know, it's convenient for sure, but I think sometimes, in some situations, IVs may be easier to to tolerate than mm -hmm. some of these chronic oral You know, I'm glad you said that because what I hear sometimes is that the, the oncologists that I know are so caught up mm -hmm. in these drugs that when they see one that has a better side effect profile, they say, oh, this is great. Well, from the patient's perspective, it isn't. No. It's I mean, better it's than still the chemo. And people sometimes chemo. think, if right. I'm taking a pill, it's, it's not, not chemo. chemo. Right. It is chemo. Okay. You treat it like chemo mm. and it has side effects. So, that being said, it does, I mean, the oral drugs, you, you tend to have fewer hospital admissions because of side effects from oral drugs than you do from IV drugs. Okay. And, um, and so, again, in terms of the cost of care, that's you know, potentially a way to keep costs down. All right, now from that, that's from the patient perspective. Some good, some bad. Mm -hmm. On balance, is it fair to say that you guys think, and I don't mean to use this as a sexist term, you people think <laughs> that it's, <laughs> it's an improvement in general? the oral oncolytics versus the IV oncolytics. Yeah, and like, I think of chemo more like a, an atomic bomb that you just drop it and see what happens after the fallout. <laughs> when you're talking about oral oncolytics, you are more like a sniper. You go into the target, you're just attacking that. You may have some other issues going on, but otherwise it, it's a much better alternative that you can actually take at home. Yeah, I mean, it, in overall, I would agree with that, but I think it depends on the drug. Absolutely, I mean, mm -hmm. nothing, is, nothing is 100%, so I agree, there, there's some exceptions to the rule. I mean, I use capsidabine for all my patients, hand foot syndrome, diarrhea, it's a very prominent thing. Uh, some patients just use the 5 few pump, and they're actually much better, and they forget about taking pills. And, and it's the same drug, just different administration, uh, and, and it makes a difference for some patients, so. So if the primary interest, obviously, is keeping patients happy, in addition to making patients better. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at providers. Is there an advantage, or if is there a disadvantage to the oral oncolytics from the provider perspective? There's a disadvantage because the provider doesn't get reimbursed to manage those oral oncolytics. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of time to follow up on Noah's point. I think the orals require much more monitoring and education than intravenous therapies. And the physicians and the nursing staff that really monitor those patients closely spend a lot of time with those patients managing those toxicities um, and keeping up with those patients, but we don't get reimbursed for that. So what you're saying is there's more work and less money. So there's a disincentive 
Mm -hmm. The way the system is structured right now. The way the system is structured, it, from my point of view, it's, it's the right medication for the patient at the right time. Whether it's intravenous or oral, it's what's best for that patient with all factors being considered. The toxicity profiles may need to be considered. The financial toxicity may need to be considered. And that's why I think as we move forward, the patient really needs to be more involved in a lot of these decisions that we make today. And with the proviso that I'm going to put on my asbestos suit, turn to you and say, what, a prov what do the, the payers get out of oral therapy, oral oncolytic therapy? What's the disadvantage to payers, those folks you seem to love so much? <laughs> well, I'm backing you know, away from him a little so bit. The, <laughs> so there's several. Um, one is that, again, some of these drugs are very effective. And so people are living a long time on chronic drugs, and it's, raise, it's, it's astronomically raising the cost of, of care. Um, uh, and I, you know, I guess the advantage for payers is that, um, again, you know, probably fewer hospitalizations, fewer, um, um, you know, fewer complications of, of treatment yeah, in general yeah. with, with uh, orals. Well, and, and you know, if you look at the labor and the workforce, you know, days out of work, you know, do oral therapies help patients stay at work compared to patients that need to be tied to a chair for eight hours a day? Right. So the payer may look at that also from you know um, a compensation standpoint, you know, from but, a long term. But wait, do payers therapy. really look at that? I mean, the payer I don't think so. really is getting money into the plan from premiums, right, and other compensation, and is paying out for therapy. If they were to look at the global societal impact of this, you suggest they might see an improvement and a benefit, but they're not, if I believe you. Yeah. They're looking at this very narrow slice, which is, I'm paying this, and it's working, and now I've got 30 years more. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, I'll be a little bit cynical as well. Is that uh, A little because, bit cynical? <laughs> you? Because, because the oral drugs tend to uh, have fewer side effects, patients tolerate it longer, they're on these drugs longer. Um, if they were getting IVs, they probably went beyond that. Right, so and in this area of value-based frameworks that we're doing, oncology care model, macro MIPS, and others, um, I think at least with the oral oncolytics, they can monitor compliance, they can make sure that medication is the right one for the patient, that we're giving the right dose, we're decreasing hospitalizations and inpatient stays, which are pretty expensive for, for payers to any way to, uh, to reimburse. So uh, I think that's probably an advantage from that side. Um, the, the other thing is that we're decreasing facility fees because those patients are not getting treatment in-house, they're not getting any infusions, a chair, a nurse, et cetera, that may be another source of- So of, is there some committee, do you think, in the payer community that says, he's right, these are expensive, bad, but he's right, we're saving money here, good, and they're weighing Oh, I'm balance. sure they're calculating this thing. I feel they're not, they are losing money, would be my guess. They're would losing be, Would money. be, when patients stay on long-term oral therapy, yeah. these drugs can be $30,000 a month, yeah. month yeah. after wow. month after month, yeah. and they're, you know, I don't think, IV chemo yeah. would be more than that. With you know all the nursing done? costs, with all of the, you know, administration so, facility costs. You have mm -hmm. just succeeded in doing something I never thought could be done. Uh-oh. You've made me sympathetic to third-party payers. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, if you're looking at this, you're looking at a hit of 30000 a month. It could, yes. Yeah. So I think yes. with the, the payers, at least the ones that I've been meeting with, they're more interested in pathway adherence. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, is where I think the, the payers are looking. Right. And so, um, they look at the total book of business, but they may look at uh, pathway adherence and even around supportive care agents that we use um, to support our patients where they may not want to pay for one agent over another. So they're looking at supportive care therapies, but the treatment pathways is where I think they see where money can be saved, at least right now. I'm not, that's not the answer, complete answer in my mind, but that's where they're focused. Yeah, being on, on label. On oh, pathway yeah, they love that. and NCCN clinical trial. NCCN guidelines, yeah. they love, they love NCCN. Yeah. Okay. If something yeah. is not NCCN guideline, you can almost not get it approved. 